Welcome back to Stompbox Breakdown. I got a brand new pedal and I just want to get right to it. So let's go. What the heck is going on there, right? This is the Boss SY1 synthesizer, and it is a polyphonic synthesizer that you play with your guitar or bass. And you can call it a synth pedal, but I've played synth pedals before, and this, this is something different. Now, Boss has a long history of doing the guitar synthesizer thing. It used to require a special pickup with its own cable and a gigantic special floor unit that cost a bunch of money and was pretty neat but maybe not all that practical. Actually, for a little while, I was playing in a band with a guy who had one, and it would just never work right. It would come up with the wrong setting, the volume was off, it would just throw in random notes and ignore other ones. It was, all right, it was, it was actually pretty funny to watch. But science has brought us to the point where we get near perfect tracking without needing a special pickup. And this is sort of the simplified greatest hits version of the SY300, which in and of itself is a simplified version of the SY1000. Those more expensive synths give you a lot more knobs, a lot more buttons and nice big displays. On the SY1, you get six knobs and no displays. And yet somehow it just works. Here's how it works. You start out with the type and there's lots of types and some types have two notches on here like lead. Let's take the second lead setting. These tend to be your basic synthesizer sounds like sawtooth waves, square waves, all that good analog stuff. Then we select the variation and just going through the variations. <laughs> You can hear all the different variations in there. Now, I like number six, so we're gonna set it on number six. So now we've got lead number two as our type and variation number six. And now let's talk about these knobs right here, the tone, rate, and depth. Do not dismiss them. On a lot of pedals, you'll see things labeled like tone and rate and depth, and you'll say, okay, I'll just park them in the middle and I'll get a pretty good sound out of it. On this pedal, they are used to control various parameters of the variation that you brought up. So you really gotta play around with them and find out what they do. So on this patch. All right, it's got that extra little something. It's got that, that envelope note that it brings out like a second note that goes up and down. And on this particular patch, by bringing up the depth knob, it makes that uh, a little bit lower, or maybe it makes it less sensitive. Either way. It, 
it adjusts the parameters of that second sweep. Now, not every patch has that second note doing that crazy thing. So that knob is gonna control something different on a different patch. Same thing with the, uh, the tone slash rate knob. It does different things on different patches. And you can actually download a sheet that lists all of the variations and what the knobs do for each one of them. Um, my advice in the time it would take you to read the name of the thing, you could just be playing with it and figuring out what the knobs do in your own terms. So just do that. <laughs> This pedal works for guitar or bass. You can see there's this little switch here on the back to go between them. Everything you're hearing here, I'm just recording directly out of the pedal into a recording interface. I'm bypassing any sort of guitar amplifier. If you want to amplify this for a practice live gig, or just messing around or whatever, I highly recommend you plug it into a bass amp or a keyboard amp or a PA, something meant for a wide range of frequencies. Uh, a guitar amp, it might add some coloration that you don't like, or uh, you know some of the sounds this thing makes might honestly not be all that healthy for a guitar amplifier, so you've been warned. Here's a feature that you just gotta know about, the parallel effects loop. Obviously, you want clean, unaffected guitar going into the pedal so that it can do the best possible job at tracking those notes, but what if I want to affect my guitar signal without affecting the sound of the synth? Well, that's what this parallel effects loop is for. You throw a pedal in between the send and the return, and then you mix those two, the dry and the effect signal, with the knobs all the way on the left side there. So if I pull up the bell setting, uh, variation seven, I could get something like this. And that's your typical 80s, 90s synth, right? Nothing wrong with it. Maybe not all that interesting. You know how much I love the OC3 Super Octave for making something big and hairy? I'm gonna throw that in the parallel effects loop and turn it on. And now I get something like this. Another great feature of this pedal is the sound hold function. So I can play a sound or a sequence and it will play, but if I hold down the pedal after it starts playing that sound, it'll hold it. Right? So <laughs> I've got a DOD gunslinger distortion pedal in my parallel effects loop, it's all ready to go. And the pedal is just gonna keep looping this sequence, which sounds like a Terminator 1 type thing. And I can do stuff over it and make something really cool. I hope like this. That's fun. All right, one more thing. You can plug foot switches into this pedal so you get dedicated switches for the sound hold, tap tempo. You can even make the patch jump an octave like this. Um, or you can plug in an expression pedal and that gives you real time control over like the filter settings of the patch. And that's pretty cool too. I know this is stuff you probably didn't care about, but I hope you see it and you're like, hey, that is pretty cool. And I haven't even gotten into the sound effects yet. I am just amazed by how much they're able to fit into a single compact pedal like this. I'm also blown away by how much control it seems like I have, given that it's just six knobs. 
I mean, you know what other pedal had six knobs just like this? That's right. So maybe you're in a band with a song that's just begging for a synth solo or some strings behind the chorus. I don't know. If you want to expand your sounds that you're capable of and you're okay with having to fiddle with the knobs in between songs or sets, this could be just what you're looking for because it's plug and play. Or maybe you're just the kind of person who likes creating new noises and soundscapes. I mean, the other night I spent hours messing around with this and my Caroline Parabola Tremolo, Somersault Modulation, Kilobyte Delay, and Meteor Reverb. I just, I just really like Caroline pedals. Um, but let me tell you, that was a spiritual journey. Kids, don't do drugs. There are all the mind-altering substances you need right in here. Okay, maybe not. But you see what I'm getting at. There's a lot going on in this pedal, and I almost expect it to weigh like a whole lot more than it does for some reason, because it just, it just feels like it's full of good sounds. I definitely think this pedal will make a lot of people very happy. And hey, speaking of making people very happy, it would make me very happy if you would click on that subscribe button somewhere down there. That way you'll get notified when there's a new video that I've put out and I can keep making these things because I enjoy making them, but I want to know I'm making them for an audience. So hopefully I'll see you on the next Stompbox Breakdown.